um, in public participation, but in this event, deputation on item number 32, Membership of Local Government New Zealand. Thank you. Kia ora, thank you. Um, so I'm not here this morning to speak as a community board chair, but I'm here to speak as an individual that has been thoroughly engaged with local government New Zealand for at least the last six years. Um, I, just for a little bit of background, I was first elected to the newly formed Young Elected Members Committee in 2014. Um, through this committee, we have worked on a high-level thought piece that is our 2050 paper. And this looks at where we will be in the year 2050 as a nation and the challenges that we are likely to face. Um, this paper was adopted by Local Government New Zealand and has been used to drive policy around New Zealand. We've also created a network of young elected members around the country that support, share ideas and learnings and encourage true diversity. We hold training sessions for elected members to enable them to become productive and well-informed members of their respective councils. I have also been on the Community Board Executive Committee since 2015 and became chair at the beginning of this term. Through this committee, we are now holding chairing training workshops, helping develop strategy for getting higher voter turnout and more quality and more quality candidates putting up their hands during the next election. Um, we will also be holding a session for our community boards here in Christchurch to feed into the future for local government reform panel. Um, through my time working with local government New Zealand, I can honestly say they have been strong advocates for both Christchurch and its residents. I know we have all been disappointed by the process of Three Waters, and while it has been frustrating not having local government New Zealand be able to formally oppose the government's decision, I can assure you that from the very first day I heard about the water reforms, without fully understanding the obviously intended outcome. Both myself and local government New Zealand staff said to government officials that this was something that Christchurch would not be happy to submit to. It doesn't take a rocket scientist, I don't think. Um, we recently had our local government New Zealand zone meeting in Christchurch and I really think this would have been the perfect opportunity for elected members to be in the room and tell local government New Zealand face to face their issues and perhaps cause a few fireworks at the same time. But unfortunately, this wasn't the case. I would be disappointed that the government mandated three waters was the reason that we step away from local government New Zealand. In a time of such divisiveness and seclusion, I would hate to see Christchurch being left out of being able to have the opportunity to make changes it will positive, positively affect our city and residents now and in the future. I believe it is important for us to stick together through these uncertain times. And I believe leaving LGNZ will leave us on the outside and will allow less opportunity for collaboration with colleagues around New Zealand. And if the decision is made to stay with local government New Zealand today, it would be great to see more engagement from and with elected members moving forward so we can all get the most out of this collaboration for the benefit of Christchurch. Thank you very much. Has anyone got any questions for Alexandra? Um, Sam. Hey, yeah, thanks, Alex, for um, zooming in for, for this. Um, I, I guess just in terms I, of, uh, look, it's, it is useful to get your point of view. I, I'm still deeply disappointed with local government New Zealand, but respect, we have a differing view on it. What, what would be the key things you think they've advocated for Christchurch for? Just you mentioned it before. Um, so I think the really important thing that they are doing at the moment, obviously Three Waters has been a shambles. And can I put my personal view across with that? Um, whilst our first meetings were, it felt like, you know, the door was open to have discussions across the whole of New Zealand. Um, I don't feel like that was necessarily the case. I feel like it was a bit like, 
you know, we have consultations that are lip service at times. Um, so whilst there has been that issue with free waters, um, I believe that with RMA reform and with the future for local government um, panel coming up and all of our other reforms, I think this is where um, local government are actually oh, yeah, sorry. making a it's, stand. It's me not being clear. Sorry, it'd be my question. I was saying, oh. <laughs> what, yeah, what, what have they advocated for that's been useful for the city is, is what I was getting at. Um, so I think, like, and this is within my committees that I'm yeah. in, Sam. Um, so speaking on behalf of that, we're obviously, uh, well, we're local government New Zealand are obviously a an organisation that are looking after the whole of New Zealand. Um, but so it is very high level the work that they are doing. Um, going back to the young elected members. Um, uh, 2050 paper that has been um, filtered through councils to look at the issues that we will be facing in the future um, with housing reforms local government New Zealand have spoken and advocated on behalf of um, Christchurch with that as well um, they have obviously tried with three waters um, but yeah it's a very high level um, organization, Sam. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, um, so and I think, yeah. I don't, think don't that worry, issue no, no, it's fine. Uh, yeah, don't worry, it's, it's I, no worries. I, I won't think, more Alexandra, time. perhaps you could focus on the fact that not every council's got community boards, but it's through the yeah. local government New Zealand structure that you've come into yeah. more. Direct I, I, was contact. Get Is that right? I was trying to get the ten. I was trying to get the tangible yeah. outcomes yeah. that Alex mentioned in the deputation, but it, it doesn't. I don't want to take up unnecessary time. If I think Celeste has a question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but but I'm 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 keen for you to just just to comment on the the role that you play in terms of the community board's um, focus that LGNZ has enabled through the group that you chair. Yes. So, well, look, obviously, with the um, community board executive committee, we are working on um, making community boards the best they can possibly be through New Zealand and Christchurch is actually um, a city and a council that has been doing very well in this respect. Um, and Christchurch is actually being used as an example. So um, when we are looking at the future for local government, this is something, I'm not talking about things that have happened in the past. This is obviously something that's happening now. And um, I think it's very important for us to be within those conversations and um, we are advocating strongly for well-working community boards. And Christchurch has the opportunity to help form that for the whole of New Zealand. So it's a two-way two street. Is, it's a two-way street is what you're saying. Absolutely. We, can, we, we, and can, I think, we, we contribute and we get back. Absolutely. And I think actually I think Christchurch, to be totally honest, we haven't um, necessarily been contributing as much as we could have been. And um, I think that we need to be having more of those conversations with local government New Zealand mm. than perhaps we have been. Great, uh, Celeste. Hi, Alex. I'm not actually sure which camera I'm supposed to be looking at, so you're probably seeing the back she, of my she, head. She's, <laughs> she's probably she's probably up there somewhere, but I don't know where I am. You're, you're such a you're such a distant little <laughs> dot. Uh, it probably doesn't matter. It's true. I'm quite short as well. <laughs> Just speaking, just speaking, um, speaking. Sorry. <laughs> I just want to say thanks, Alex. It's really good to hear from your perspective. Um, obviously, the young um, local government members, is it's really important to hear your view. So it's really just wanting to say thanks. Sorry, it's not a question. Um, and, you know, my understanding is that at that high level, it's, it's what Leanne said, it's about things like advocating for tree protection, housing reform, funding for civics education, there's a lot of things. Is that your, do you feel like there is a lot of value added in, in those areas? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are asked by um, government um, frequently to actually feed into a more national framework of how we make things better. Um, and once again, I hope that it is not all lip service because we do seem to get very good feedback from it. 
but obviously within bureaucracy everything takes a very long time um, but we do work really hard to get positive outcomes for the whole of the country um, and also understanding that within New Zealand we have very diverse communities and cities um, and I think Christchurch really needs to be stepping up within the local government sector um, to be recognised as the second largest city in New Zealand. I think that's really important. We do have so much to offer and with us um, actually giving those offerings and having those conversations and being around the table, we have the opportunity to not only help shape New Zealand for local government, but actually help make Christchurch a better place as well. So that's where I'm coming from it. Um, from my perspective. Thank you, Alexandra. It's just perfect timing now, so that's the end of the 10 minutes. So thank you very much for contributing to the deputations, and um, we'll move on to the next one. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So the next one is uh, Gary Moore regarding Item 31, Memorandum of Understanding. Mayor and councillors, um, just to explain how I got involved in this, really, um, the Tuesday Club was concerned about the um, the government's proposal to um, basically steal local government's water. So we um, uh, we called a, a Zoom call because there was a um, uh, we were locked up at that time, and we called the chairs of infrastructure from a number of councils and the mayor of Waimakariri. And we found that there was quite a lot of councils looking on their own. They, they were thinking, are we on our own? So I started, as I have done many times in my life, ringing around New Zealand. I looked up mayor's phone numbers on their Zoom in their website and I uh, realised that um, this wasn't a left versus right debate that I have a friend of mine who is advising Minister Mahuta, who was also advising Bill English, on exactly the same issue. And if the National Party were in power right now, Labour would be saying what National's saying right now. And so what we have to do is to actually look at this from a local government perspective. Um, what we need is for central government to actually start treating local government as equals. And we, this council here worked really hard in 2001, 2000 to get, and we seconded our, our CEO to Wellington to get internal affairs to actually understand what local government really was because they are weak as hell on their understanding and they've proved it with this. And it is quite interesting that the man who was in charge of leading this in internal affairs has been just recently shifted sideways. Um, what was obvious uh, around the country, and I'm talking liberal mayors and conservative mayors, so I'm not talking just one particular group of mayors, this isn't a national versus labour thing. What people were looking for was sensible local solutions. They were looking for a, 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 a way of debating the issue locally where you could look at your local natural water catchment. And so, <laughs> so the debate has been local solutions versus central control, and the government has managed this whole exercise really, really well. They've garroted local government New Zealand with an agreement. They have... Um, the, the idea, if you really want to know where it came from, it came from Infrastructure New Zealand. They took a trip to... Scotland, and they wrote that report, and the report reads like the, what, what you're looking at right now, and it's really bad. But what we found in places like Hawke's Bay, and the other thing too is some of the, we've been looking at the numbers, some of the numbers are just absolute rubbish, like 34,000 people being poisoned every year. The only place we can find that is in a partial PhD paper, preparation of PhD, in 2006. There is Nothing. It, no, the, he got his PhD in 2010. It was this was part of a paper in 2006, and 
um, to the best of, of our research, uh, there's been no serious poisonings in local government water systems since 1995 other than Hawke's Bay. So I went back to the Hawke's Bay mayor and I said, what are you guys doing? And they, have, they supplied to the government, cost them a lot of money, a proposed regional solution. And they sat down with their iwi, and there are a number of iwi there, and they worked with their iwi, and they said, let's work on a local solution. And they came up with a really good one. They sent it to uh, Internal Affairs and have yet to receive a response. Fungarae was another one where we were where we were checking what they were doing, and there uh, again, probably a fairly liberal mayor um, was. Um, she's been working extremely closely with their iwi, and so what what evolved slowly was that there was no debate about the need for water standards, none whatsoever. So there was total support. There was no debate about mana whenua involvement. And so those were the two things that are taken as read. But the debate needs to be keeping local control and keeping the assets on your balance sheet and keeping local democracy. And if I were to design a, a, um, a board, I don't think I could have designed a worse board and, and, and the structures that have been put into place, they're really, really bad. So I sat on a number of Zoom sessions. So we were organising at the Tuesday Club with no mandate or nothing. We just were ringing people and saying, let's start a Zoom. And then a number of the council started to get involved and we stood back and we attended a few of their sessions and I don't know, but uh, Mayor of WIMAC will talk about that. My observation is they are well organised, extremely well organised. They are very democratic and they are looking for sensible local solutions, and boy, they're easy to participate with, and that's the thing. So, as I said earlier, I think LGNZ have let your sector down really badly, and they've been sidelined by the government. I, if I could give my personal opinion, I would not leave LGNZ. I actually think they need a great stick of jelly up their backside, and that's what you do with this alternative structure. I was involved in doing just that when I was mayor. Um, the Local Government Act was coming in and um, we were looking for social goals for New Zealand. So we decided that we would try go for a social goal of nobody under 25 would be unemployed, so that he'd be in training or in a job. And we'd make that a local government. I was on LGNZ and, in fact, was Metro Mayor's chair. And LGNZ went, no, won't touch it, not interested. So in this very organisation, we started Mayor's Task Force for Jobs. And slowly but surely, we won over every mayor in New Zealand bar, uh, Michael Laws and Whanganui, who I was quite pleased not to have involved. And... and um, what we did was we moved local government to another place, LGNZ to another place. Now, it's quite interesting that LGNZ sees as one of their um, methods of delivery is the Mayor's Task Force for Jobs. So uh, what I see with this, with this group is I personally recommend that this council joins. I think others are watching, like Wellington and Dunedin, they are voting uh, soon. <laughs> And I think that you will be seen, I heard the last speaker, you, Christchurch needs to lead. This, I don't think Auckland's going to. I think Auckland, Metro Water is actually really deeply engaged in actually making sure they take over the north. And in internal affairs, one of the, I think it's the COO of Metro Water has just been seconded to the Department of Internal Affairs. So they're going to look after themselves. And the rest of New Zealand needs to actually be standing up because Auckland's driving everything. And so this is I see this as a green issue and that we maintain local um, maintain our local waterways and we look after that. I see this as a democratic issue. I see this as an accountability issue. And I actually think that this council 
could show leadership by joining that group, and you could also show leadership by not leaving LGNZ. But anyway, that's all. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sam you. likes one of the points. Sarah. <laughs> Thanks for that, Gary. I completely get the frustration with Three Waters and the Clounce has been very clear on that. I'm just wondering what you make of the um, deliberate exclusion um, of uh, mana whenua from the MOU. I mean, the MOU talks to environmental and health, um, but the other core part of the Three Waters stuff was um, mana whenua um, engagement and views of some of the people who have signed have been very clearly against that, which is why it's excluded that. Who? And I'm just wondering... Which one? I A few of them. I'm, I don't want to mention people's well, I, names I don't know of that. Oh, Westland, for one. Um, no, Westland, been very, no, no, no. Oh, no West... I'm just saying, what do you make of that in the MOU and our relationship with mana whenua as an organisation? Right, well, I'll talk to you about Westland, because that No, gives... that's not answering my question. Oh, yes, I will. I okay. will answer your you, you des I decide how I'm going to answer your question, OK? okay. Um, the Westland Mayor raised some points that we didn't agree with, hmm. and he was picked up by a number of the members, and they challenged him. Pauline was at that session. They challenged him, and he said, I was wrong, OK? That's how they're working. They are all working closely with mana whenua, every one of them. So it was... Uh, and you can ask uh, Dan... That, that one because mm. he works closely. Um, and and I think that um, the... Um, I, th I, I, th I think you need to be in the in, inside it to drive it because you're not inside LGNZ. LGNZ's had their teeth pulled out. They're sucking the issue. They're not actually getting their teeth in. They've got no teeth left. I've written to the chair of LGNZ and said you should resign. So in what way do you think that this group has actually got teeth? Uh, this, uh, because they're actually seeking ex alternative advice and they, you know, the, the, and you can ask Dan about this stuff, but they, they're growing in numbers. I produced in the Tuesday Club notes, because when you start challenging something, people start responding. Somebody sent me a brilliant paper, which I put a link to on the Tuesday Club notes, about Dutch water. And Dutch water is a, a model that we could copy in New Zealand. Mm. It's deeply democratic. It keeps local control. And it's the opposite to what there is um, proposed by the government. And it's been going since 16 something or other. Yeah, it's not what's but proposed in the MOU. But thank you. Pardon? That's okay, it's just not what's Sorry, proposed. Sorry, I, I missed what you said. Oh, so it just wasn't what was proposed in the MOU. So. Well, get involved and change the MOU. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so, but thank you. It's, um, that's the end of the 10 minutes, Gary. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. The LGNZ chairs. The LGNZ, yes, uh, we know each other well. Uh, listen, just before I go, I'd like to say something, Mia. I'd like to acknowledge the amazing work that Di Keenan has given to this council. Mm. that she um, regularly dug me out of the pup when I was mayor. Mm -hmm. She's respected hugely by the media, and I think this council has been a better place because she's been here. And so I just want to publicly much. acknowledge Di as a fantastic woman. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Dan, would you, uh, Dan, sorry, yeah. your worship, <laughs> Dan Gordon, Mayor of Waimakariri. Oh, be Dan Gordon. Oh. Be Dan Gordon. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Welcome. Thank you. And you can just call me Dan Leanne. We're, um, we're okay. good colleagues. Thank you. Um, good morning. And look, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak this morning uh, about the memorandum of understanding between partner councils relating to Three Waters uh, reform. It's really hard to follow on from such a good act as Gary, and I just want to acknowledge uh, Gary and have appreciated his thinking, and I have really enjoyed and am enjoying working with him, uh, particularly on this matter. I want to start by saying that I'm representing a group of currently 21 uh, councils and mayors who are going to provide an alternative proposal to the government on the Three Waters reform. Across the country, councils all agree on the need for water reform change. 
we opted into the initial reform proposal because we appreciated the challenges and were open to working on a solution with central government. Throughout the course of engagement, however, it became apparent, as we know, that there was a fixed view on the solution, being a variation of the Scottish water model. Across the country, there was near on universal opposition to the forced for uh, entity model from councils, political parties, and mostly, most importantly, our communities. 60 out of 67 councils either intended to opt out or had major concerns about the reform proposals before this was mandated. You'll all know from your own engagement with residents how people feel about this. In my Makariri, 95% of our uh, respondents to our um, polls that we put out there wanted the council to opt out. A Curia poll of 1,000 New Zealanders showed that 56% opposed the reforms, just 19% in support and 24% are unsure. That same poll showed that in Christchurch, 57% oppose the reform, just 16% are in support, and 28% are unsure. Also, a recent news uh, read research poll showed that about 48%, almost half the country, don't support the reforms, just 27% support it, and another 25% are undecided. So that's what Kiwis and Cantabrians are saying. On the government's own Three Waters reform page, the majority of comments are also against the proposals. Communities have been very clear that they want to retain local say, knowledge and control of how water services are provided. This is something that matters very deeply to them. The government's decision to force change in the face of constructive opposition, the misleading advertising campaign, the will not oppose change deal with LGNZ and the removal of our ability to opt out of the pro process have been very divisive. We don't aim to add to this division. We do, however, owe it to our communities to play an active role in any change that will affect them. I want to be clear that our focus is on achieving better policy outcomes. We are not anti-government and I really want to stress that point. We are also not against mana whenua involvement, and all partner councils are clear on this. We are engaging with mana whenua, and our campaign name to be announced next week will include a Māori translation. I do not want to be involved in a group that disrespects mana whenua. I have a very close relationship with Naitu Hariri. It's something I feel here. It's something I have worked very hard in my role and our council has, and uh, it's something, Sarah, that I'll never want to see disrespected. We support the new uh, regulator and standards, but will demonstrate that there are alternative models that could deliver on core outcomes while being supported by ratepayers, and that's a critical piece of work that we're doing right at the present time. As we know, the DIA looked at almost 30 alternative delivery models but consulted with local government on only one that's now being forced. There are also a significant number of alternatives presented by local government, and even uh, government's own Productivity Commission um, also presented that, none of which we feel has been given proper consideration. Of the proposals considered by government, the vast majority seem to be small geographical variations of the same plan. We continue to be keen to work with the government on a plan that takes the parts we all agree on, but keeps the best parts of localism, such as responsiveness and accountability. Our campaign will launch next Wednesday, the 15th of December, with a series of meetings at Parliament with political parties that include the Greens, National, ACT and hopefully the Māori Party. As well, we are meeting with industry experts who are further investigating uh, alternative models for us. We are hoping to also meet with the Prime Minister and are meeting with Doug Martin, the Chair of the New Accountability and Governance Group. I'm very pleased that Mia Leanne is actually on this group because I think it's important that Christchurch is represented there and it's good to see that you are there, Leanne. Agreeing to join the MOU does not commit Christchurch City Council, by the way, to be part of the legal action in the High Court. This is outside the MOU 
and there is a separate post process being considered for councils who want to support this. The work we are involved in is part of a multi-pronged approach. We are not concerned who achieves change, and if our work helps others to achieve this, then that's fantastic. The constructive and open manner in which we will present these views, we hope will open further communication channels, which means the views of our sector are better represented ahead of additional times of change, and we know RMA reform future local government are some of those. But a strong voice and local voice is important during this time. Our group currently represents over 1 million New Zealanders and we would welcome you to join our campaign. We have reserved a seat for you. We have regularly briefed Deputy Mayor Andrew, Councillor Pauline and Sam on our work. It's important we work as a collective and approach this reform from as many angles as possible to get the best outcomes for our communities. We are not prepared to sit and wait for change to come. We have seen to date, unfortunately, how as a sector we have been treated over this reform. I, for one, am not one that's prepared to wait for salvation. To date, we have seen where this has got us. We need to do something about it. Helping found this partnership is one way we hope will bring about change. We are not interested in party politics, and I want to underline that. There is no alignment with any political party. There is one objective for me, and that has been able to look my community in the eye and say that I've done everything that I can to influence a better outcome for our community on Three Waters. I believe our objectives align with Christchurch City. Our aim is to influence and change the policy being pursued. Join us by agreeing to sign the MOU so we can work together on this. Thank you. For me here, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't happen at my council either. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, maybe I'll come and do a presentation. <laughs> You're welcome any time. Um, uh, Andrew and then, um, uh, you know, Anne. Um, Dan, thank you very much indeed for the presentation and for joining us this morning. Um, there's a suggestion in an um, ODT report which has been circulated to some of us, um, which refers to a debate at Invercargill City Council um, that the group has got issues with co-governance with Mana Whenua. Um, given your close involvement with the group, I just wanted you to comment on that. Are they the views of the group, or is that just the view of one councillor in Invercargill? Uh, not heard of that report, uh, and I've been involved in all the discussions uh, in the group. I'm one of the founders of it, and Deputy Chair. Uh, it's certainly not a conversation that's gone on. In fact, as I said in my comments, uh, our outreach to Mana Whenua is very important. Their involvement is very important. They play a really important integral role. A number of the councils are, uh, are actually have a mana strong Mana Whenua representation on their councils. As I say, when we launch next week, there will be uh, a Māori translation in what we're doing. So we fully intend to uh, continue our discussions with Mana Whenua, as we have been as councils here at a local level uh, with the Naitahu Takiwa. As I say, it's really important to us that we maintain that relationship because all of us have worked really hard uh, on that and, and it's about genuine partnership. Actually, Māori want the same as what we want. Um, and I, I don't really want us to be going down that rabbit hole because, to be frank, it does serves no purpose. Uh, mana whenua are incredibly important in this conversation and we intend to engage strongly with them. Anne. Kia ora. Um, thank you, uh, Gary and Dan. And um, you've outlined a lot of huge benefits for us to join um, the, and to sign the MOU. Have you identified any risks at all for us as a council or other councils? I haven't identified, well, I guess any advocacy has its risks, but I haven't identified any as such. That we're in a robust democracy and uh, our opportunity to have a say is very important and to make sure the views of our communities are well represented. The best way we thought that that could be achieved is coming together as a collective rather than individuals. Unfortunately, where LGNZ got to, they signed uh, heads of agreement that said that they wouldn't actively oppose the Three Waters reform. It was really unfortunate. Heard strong views around that. I've expressed very strong views myself, including to the president of LGNZ. 
ideally I'd like the LGNZ to have been doing this work, but they, their hands are tied. They're not able to do it as effectively as we can do. And, and look, we have a, I think it's our right to make sure that our community's views are well represented. So that's why we're coming together to do our best to get the right outcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh